Alright, welcome back everyone. Now, today I'm trying to prepare another full version of uh, the complete parcel paper. Uh, this, in this video here, I'm going to uh, complete this um, parcel paper November 2021 uh, mechanics paper, paper 32. Uh, you can find all the descriptions to every single uh, questions in the description. Right. Let's look at the first question here. We have uh, a particle is projected with the speed u at an angle alpha above the horizontal from a point O on a horizontal plane. The particle moves uh, freely under gravity. Now we need to write down the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity of the particle at time t after projection. Now, I do advise that um, when you attempt a mechanics question, do read until the end of the questions before you try to answer every single part. Uh, so that it's more smooth in uh, transition. Okay. Now for the second section, at time t after projection, the direction of the motion of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of the projection. Now we need to express t in terms of u, g and alpha. And then hence, we are going to deduce that t is greater than u over g. Okay, now I, I think the second section is more interesting in this case. So maybe it's best we try to uh, represent this visually. How does the projectile motion look like? Okay, so first of all, it is a projectile motion. It looks something like this, example. <clears throat> All right, so from here, uh, the initial projection is over here. Let's assume that um, it is launched at the speed u at the angle alpha here. All right. Now, to get the um, horizontal component, the horizontal component is given by ux here, whereby the vertical component is given by u y. Okay. Now u y can be obtained quite easily by having u sine alpha, whereby u x is known as u cos alpha here. Now I hope that is clear. Uh, for the first question here, we need to write down the horizontal and vertical component of the velocity of the particle at time t after projection but this is the initial component of the velocity uh, at the launching um, launching time right so now at time t sir let's draw at time t so it could be somewhere here for instance hold on let me clean this up here so at time t it could be somewhere here for instance Right, it could be somewhere here. If I were to extend this uh, further up, okay, uh, in order to look at the second uh, part here, before I try to fully un answer question one, okay, uh, because question one is quite uh, direct anyway, right? If you want to answer it, it shouldn't be any problem. But if you look at question two here, at time t auto projection, the direction of the motion of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of projection. So this is this line here represent the direction of projection. This line here represent the directions of the particle at time t. So I can extend this further a bit. This should be 90 degree. Uh, that's what uh, they are talking about. All right. And then uh, if I were to extend it further a bit here, okay, to show you the relationship here. Now I'm going to redraw this somewhere here. I try to construct a right angled triangle here. All right. Now this angle alpha is the same as this angle here, alpha. All right. And then if I were to redraw another uh, one here, so you can see that I can actually draw another section here. Uh, this section would represent the horizontal component of the velocity 
after time t. So I'm going to label that as vx. To the right is positive. And then because it's coming down, so therefore, there's another component here that is going down. Now that is known as Vy here. This is 90 degree. Okay. Okay. So I hope that is uh, clear at this point. Uh, you can see that because this is 90 degree, and then these two lines here, these two lines, this line and this line here, are both parallel. So therefore, this must be alpha. I hope you can see that uh, quite uh, quite clearly from here. This alpha and this alpha must be the same. All right. Now that is the most important part. Okay. So this is at time the particle is all at this point. This is at time t. Oh. Now we are ready to answer the question A. Now. Okay. Let's get back to question A. Write down the horizontal and vertical component. Okay, so the horizontal component of the particle at time t equals zero. We make assumptions that it is only influenced by gravity. There is no air resistance. That's our assumption. So because there is no air resistance, the horizontal component of the particle at time t, t sir, must be the same as the initial horizontal component. Uh, now in this case, it's given by u cosine alpha, whereby the vertical component of the uh, particle at time t is given by the kinematic equation that is uy minus gt here. Right. And then uy, as I mentioned before, uy is given as u sine. So therefore, this one can be written as u sine alpha subtract of gt. Okay, and then we are done. A is done. So I hope that is clear. It's a very direct uh, question where you just need to refer to your MF19. You have forgotten the kinematic equation and then all you need to do is just uh, substitute it and then we are done. Okay. Now the second part, at time t after projection, the direction of the motion of the particle is perpendicular to the direction of projection. We need to express t in terms of u, g and alpha. Now I have shown to you here uh, based on this uh, triangle here, we know that tangent alpha, tangent alpha is given by u y over u x. That is the initial right angle triangle. And then if you look at at time t for this right angle triangle, we found that tangent alpha, also tangent alpha, is given by u. Sorry, it's not u, it's v. Sorry about that. It's Vx over Vy. But do pay attention to Vy because the velocity is going down, so it should be negative. Okay. So from here, because both yield the same tangent, therefore you can equate Uy over Ux must be the same as negative Vx over Vy. And then all we need to do is just substitute all the representations of uy, which is u sine alpha. This part here is u cos alpha. And then negative um, u cos alpha over, um, over u sine alpha minus gt. Okay. So from here, all we need to do is just rearrange this uh, correctly, if I rearrange this correctly, I will have negative u square cosine square alpha should be equal to uh, cross multiply. I will have u cos. Do I get a u cos? Yeah, I do get a u cos here. So u, uh, so u cos u sine square alpha and then um, minus of. Um, let me see how would I rearrange this. I would say G U sine alpha T. Okay, so I hope that is clear. And then uh, from here we can rewrite that as G U sine alpha T as U square sine square alpha plus cos square alpha. I can join these two together. Therefore, only left with u because we know that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. And then both the u can be reduced. 
and then we can conclude that the time taken to reach this uh, condition is given as uh, we still have one u here so u over g sine alpha all right now i'm going to pause there i hope that you guys are clear uh, the question b all right now to answer question c is uh, very direct okay now for c basically we are trying to make use of the trigonometry range okay now let me uh, erase of this then we can look at c sir. so we don't need this anymore all right by using this result that we have of 10 we know that t is equal to u g sine alpha all i need to do at this point is to make the alpha is a subject we know that sine alpha is equal to u over gt and then we know that the range for sine alpha is less than actually is less than equal to one but because they are using greater than so therefore it must be less than one here okay and then by a bit of rearranging you will notice that the t can be brought over uh, then we can conclude that the t is greater than u over g here all right so i hope that that is uh, clear for c here all right that concludes our first question i'm going to proceed on to the second one shortly all right now let's take a look at the second questions involve um, hook's law uh, spring elastic material Right. So here we have a light spring AB has a natural length A and modulus elasticity of 5 mg. The end A of a spring is attached to a fixed point on a smooth horizontal surface. A particle P or mass M is attached to the end B of the spring. The spring and the particle are at rest on the surface. So the next uh, section another particle q of the mass km is moving with the speed of square root of 4 ga along the horizontal surface towards p in the directions of ba these two particles collide and then um, they coalesce meaning that they join together and then in the subsequent motion the greatest amount by which the spring is compressed is 1 over 5a so by using all this information we're going to work out the value for k here all right now i'm just going to sketch a very um, simple uh, diagram to represent this we have um we have a spring okay generally this is a spring fixed here at a here we have a spring and then attached to a a particle for instance and then there's another particle b sorry this is particle p this is particle q this particle q is moving at the speed of 4 g a square root all right now each one of them have their own mass like particle p has a mass m particle q is km the original length for the spring is a originally and then it has the um, modulus of elasticity of 5 mg all right now that's how it looked like initially initially okay and then this is before uh, and then i'm going to draw another one after so after that this is still a Right. after both of them coalesce meaning that they join together all right and then it would um it will eventually compress all right compress about one fifth a then therefore this length become uh four over five a then. so the amount of compression is uh, one fifth a okay we need to figure out what is its speed when they coalesce and then when the spring move in the directions of uh, ba this is after 
after collision this is before collision All right now the other thing you must remind yourself is in the exam uh, the mass is uh, so when they collide the mass is uh, in total you must remember is m plus km or you can write as 1 plus km so there's a reminder for you guys who are taking this exam um, be very careful with the masses okay so now once you're happy with all the setup uh, we are ready to work with this but there are two concepts uh, involved here firstly uh, you have to apply the conservation of momentum before okay by using conservation of momentum um, we are looking at the pictures before collision so we have km square root of ga uh, total momentum before collision must be the same as total momentum after the collision so when they coll collide a coil is uh, therefore we have uh, 1 plus km v okay until we reach the maximum compression maximum compression means when it reach up to here one fifth the final velocity here is zero. Yeah, final velocity is equal to zero. Okay. Now before that, we're going to work out the common uh, speed when it collide and coalesce. Therefore, here we have, uh, we can see that quite easily is k four g a square root one plus k. Yeah. All right. Now that is the speed uh, when the particle Q collide with P and then they coil this at that point of time. Right? Then that kinetic energy, that kinetic energy due to the speed here would further convert it to elastic potential energy. So the loss in kinetic energy will become the gain in elastic potential energy. Uh, that's the conservation of energy concept that we are going to apply here. All right so we're going to use conservation of energy we know that um, the gain in epe so gain uh, you can say change in gpe must be the same as change in uh, kinetic energy all right so what we are having is oops <laughs> sorry it's not gpe it's epe elastic potential energy right. now the formula for elastic potential energy is half okay uh, half lambda we have our lambda which is 5 mg over a multiplied by the square of its compression so that is one fifth a must be the same as uh, the loss in kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy. This is the part that we have to be very careful because that is uh, one object uh, joining to uh, two object joined together. So we have to take into account the new mass m v square. So this square here we have k square four g a one plus k square. Right now, that's how it looked like. So I'll try to simplify this as much as possible. You will notice that the G, M, G, A all cancel out. Therefore, we only left with like the half can be removed. Uh, we will have uh, one fifth on the left hand side, I think. Let me check. Yeah, it's just one fifth. And then on the right hand side, we have the one plus K has been cancelled off. The rest cancel off. We have 4k square over 1 plus k. And then from here, we can uh, finish up the quadratic equation. I think uh, that is pretty, pretty obvious. Uh, minus 1, 4k plus 1. Let me check if I got this correctly. Um, oops, I think I messed up with this supposed to be the other way around okay let me correct that okay uh, now it will be correct so from here uh, the value the value for k could be negative 1 over 5 or uh, a quarter here 
but we know that k is used to represent the mass. Mass can't be negative. Therefore, um, k must be equal to a quarter here. All right. So I hope uh, that is clear for this um, collision question and elastic potential energy. All right. Okay. We're going to move on to the next question shortly. All right. Let's take a look at question number three. Circular motion. In this case, it's a horizontal circular motion. We have particle A and B of masses M3M as depicted in the diagram. Uh, are connected through a light inextensible string of length A that passes through a fixed smooth ring R. Particle B hangs in equilibrium uh, vertically below the ring. So particle A moves in horizontal circle with the speed B. And then both particle A and B are at the same horizontal label. The angle between A R and B R is theta show that the cosine data is equal to one third and then finally we need to find out the expression for v in terms of a and g here all right now for these type of questions the the usual procedure is label all the forces we have tension that is acting on the string same thing over here that will give us the same tension over this side all right so that is the tension and then uh, we do have the weight don't forget and then we have the a bit of uh, geometry here. We have the angle theta here. Right? Now, you can consider the forces uh, acting on one particular um, particle at a time. So we're going to consider forces acting on B. So we're going to focus on B here, particle B. I just write it down in short. We know that the tension the tension must be equal to 3mg because it's in equilibrium, it's not moving up and down. Therefore, the tension must balance up with its weight. That's the first. Right? Then the second one, by considering the forces acting on A, sir, uh, we can resolve the forces vertically. So take for instance, we resolve the forces vertically. That would give us T cosine theta must be the same as mg here. Right. And then we know t is this. Therefore, we're going to substitute number 1 into number 2. Uh, therefore, we have, we're going to substitute a 1 into 2. And then that will give us 3mg cosine theta is equal to mg. And then from here, we can conclude that cos theta must be equal to one third. And then we have proven uh, the first part, which is only two marks. Right? <clears throat> now, next, we're going to consider forces acting. Uh, so we are still going to consider forces acting on A, but this time we are going to resolve the forces horizontally uh, towards the center of the circle. That is where the centripetal uh, force uh, take place. Using Newton's second law, we know that the net force regarding circular motion will be mv square over over the radius of the circle. Okay, so the radius of the circle I'm going to label as r, which is this part here. R. Okay, now we need to work out what is r knowing that the cosine is equal to one third cosine equal to one third means i'm going to draw the diagram here you can see that cosine one third this is the angle it means that this is one this three because the whole length is a therefore this length here this length you can treat as um three 3a, uh, sorry, not, not 3a, you can treat it as, let me show it to you, you can treat it as a 3 quarter, uh, this part you can treat it as 3 quarter a, whereby this one will be 1 quarter a. Uh, that's how we get uh, the length, and then if you add all this length up, it should end up with um, the length of a here. Right, that's how 
we see it in terms of ratio. Okay, yeah? all right. Now from here we can work out the radius. All right, so the radius is here. We can work out the radius of the circular motion. That is typically r is equal to three quarter a sine theta. Okay, no doubt. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So from here we can apply the Newton's second law. Uh, the force that is acting towards the center is provided by T sine theta. And then that would produce the centripetal force, which is um, the cap sorry, the mass for A is M. Uh, the speed is uh, it is moving at the speed V, yes, correct. So V square, and then the R is this. All right, so from here, we can rewrite this. Uh, we know the T is uh, one third. Um, one third. Uh, what do you have? Oh, sorry, the T is 3 mg. So this part here, we can put as 3 mg and then multiply with 3 quarter a sine square theta is equal to mv square. You can see that. Now, of course, the mass can be removed. We will have 9 over 4 ag sine theta square. Therefore, the velocity or the speed is 3 over 2 um, square root of ag sine theta here and then any anyway sine theta uh, we know that sine theta must be uh, given by you can actually calculate the sine theta okay knowing that the cos theta is this now sine theta you can use the identity for sine theta which is uh, in our case is uh, 1 minus 1 third square this is sine square theta and then from here our sine theta will be equal to let me see here uh, there will be 8 so 8 will be 2 set 2 over 3 uh, 2 set 2 over 3 and then from here all we need to do is just uh, substitute this and then we will get the expressions for B in terms of a and G here. So we can substitute this. We will get a uh, set 2 which is equal to uh, square root of 2AG there. So I hope that is clear. Right. Um, I'm going to move on to the next question shortly. All right. Welcome back. This is our next question 4. Uh, this is um, a questions regarding the center of mass of a solid rigid body. Uh, let's read through before we attempt this. An object is formed by removing a solid cylinder of height Ka and radius uh, half a A from a uniform solid hemisphere of radius A. The axis of uh, symmetry of the hemisphere and the cylinder coincide and one circular face of the cylinder coincide with the plane face of the hemisphere. AB is a diameter of the circular face of the hemisphere. You can see that from the diagram. Our first task usually is very uh, standard. We need to show that the distance of the center of mass of the object of the entire solid uh, rigid body from AB uh, is given as such. All right. Now once we know that, uh, the second part will be when the object is freely suspended from the point A, the line AB make an angle theta with the downward uh, vertical where the tangent is equal to 7 over 8. With this information, we are going to find out the values. Values, okay. All right. So stay tuned. I'm going to um, trim off some of the questions so that we can concentrate on the question. Question number one. We're going to find out the center of mass with, uh, with respect to line AB as our reference, right? Stay tuned. All right, first question, we want to find out the center of mass for this rigid body with respect to line AB. So from here, I prepare a table for us to work on the center of mass. As usual, uh, here I'm going to list down the solids that we 
are interested to work with uh, we have a hemisphere that's the first one and then we have a cylinder and then finally we have the composite rigid body uh, what we are interested to get here is typically the volume now the volume for hemisphere is 2 third pi r uh, pi r cube so in this case the radius is uh, a so pi r cube now that's the volume for the hemisphere shouldn't be a problem um, it's uh, 2 third pi r cube uh, pi a cube in this case All right. and then as for the cylinder the formula will be uh, pi half a square uh, pi half a square multiplied with the height which is ka here and then that can be simplified to uh, k pi over 4 let me see k pi over 4 a cube right. and then lastly is the center of mass for each individual uh, solid center of mass for hemisphere uh, you have to refer to your mf19 All right based on the mf19 the center of mass okay is located at three third uh, three third of the radius of the hemisphere so that is three third from way from the center of the hemisphere okay so that will be three third the radius is a A, so therefore the center of mass is uh, treated from the line AB. You can say that from the line AB or from the center of the hemisphere here. All right, so I hope that is clear. And then cylinder is very obvious. Cylinder is just um, half, half a Ka from uh, line AB. There. All right, so for volume, in the in our case we are removing part of the solids so therefore we are going to take the volume of the hemisphere subtract off with the volume of the uh, cylinder uh, that would actually give us in this case i'm going to uh, i'm going to factorize that uh, based on this i would say that will be pi a cube over 12 all right and then uh, that should give me uh, let me see what do we have uh, i think this is a four is a eight so eight minus uh three k all right and then the center of mass of the entire rigid body i'm going to label it as uh, x bar here all right <clears throat> so from here onwards all right from here onwards, I'm going to apply the principle of moment. I would say that the sum, um, sorry, the moment of the entire uh, composite body is the same as the sum of each individual solids that form that uh, this object here. So that means we have pi a cube over 2, 8 minus 3k. Right now, that will be x bar. Here I drop the um, the former um, density and gravity that we can cancel out left hand side, right hand side of the equation. Okay, so that will be the same as the hemisphere. So hemisphere we have two third pi a cube multiplied by three eight a. And then because we are removing, so we have to subtract that by k pi over 4a cubed by k over 2a here. <clears throat> Alright, so let me try to simplify this. Let me see what do we have here. Uh, that will be a quarter pi a, pi a 4. Okay. Is it pi a4? Let me see. Pi a4. Yep, should be correct. And then from here, uh, all right, I think it's better if I remove all the a cube. Yeah, it will be easier to handle. So if I remove that, it will be pi. I think all pi can be removed also. So to save time, 
I'll remove the pi and the a cube. Uh, that only give me 8 over 12 x bar. Alright, so the pi a cube has been reduced. That will be a quarter a only. Subtract off with, uh, let me see here, we have k over 2a. So that would give us um, k square over 8a. And then you can factorize that as like 1 over 8a, 1 over 8a, 2 minus um, k square, 2 minus k square. Alright, so that's how it looks like. And then uh, finally, we can conclude that the center of mass measured from AB, right, will be the same as, let me see here, that will be 3A2 minus K square divided by uh, 4, 2, 8 minus 3K here. <clears throat> Alright, so I hope that that is clear. That's how we find the center of mass for the composite body. All right. So I'm going to pause here for a while. All right. Let's move on to the second part of this uh, rigid body. Uh, we have already found out the center of gravity with respect to the line AB from here. So here I label O. O to G is given as such. Now when the object is freely suspended from point A, the line AB makes an angle theta with the downward vertical. When they say downward vertical, it basically means the line that passes through the center of mass. Because as you hang this, um, this object about A, the line of uh, action uh, will always pass through the center of gravity. And then this line becomes the vertical line. And then uh, when they say that make an angle of theta with the downward vertical, they are actually referring to this line here. This is the line um, this is the vertical line, downward vertical line. Right? The angle make is theta here. All right. So I hope that is clear at this point. We know that tangent theta is equal to 7 over 18. Yeah. And then we also know OG is here. We know that the length, uh, sorry, the radius of the hemisphere is A. Uh, therefore, we know that um, tangent theta is basically given by OG over A, which is the same as 7 over 18. Okay, so I hope that is clear. And then OG, we have the OG over here. Now I'm going to reduce the A directly. That will only give us 3 over 2, 2 minus k squared over 8 minus 3k. Okay, around here. Equal to 7 over 18. <clears throat> now, at this point, all we need to do is basically just uh, solve this equation. Right? So, let us try to solve this. This is 927. 27, so that is 27, 2 minus k square is equal to 7, 8 minus 3k. All right. And then uh, once I rearrange this correctly, I should get 27 k square, um, and then uh, minus 21k. Okay. And then finally, I have like 56, 54. 56, 54, okay, so this is 56, this is 54, so only 2 here. And then from here, I try my luck here. Let me see whether I get that. Uh, all right, so just nice. 9K, uh, 9K with 2, so 9K with 2, uh, both are negative, so therefore uh, 9K with uh, 1, and then 3k, 3 times 9k is 27 uh, minus a 1 also. <clears throat> Let me check one more time. Oops, uh, not a 1, it's a, it's a 2. Let me check whether I got it correct. It's negative 18, negative 21. Yes, correct. So from here, the possible value that we can have are k is equal to 1 over 9 or 
2 over 3 here. All right. And then there you have it. All right. So I hope that is clear at this point. Uh, bear in mind, the line of action always pass through the center of mass wherever you hang it. All right. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next question shortly. All right. Question 5. Uh, this is a uh, oblique collision. Uh, we have two uniform smooth spheres A and B of equal radius have masses of M or uh, 1.5 M respectively. Uh, the two spheres are each moving with speed U on a horizontal surface when they collide. Immediately before collision, A directions of the motion is along the line of centers and B directions of motion makes an angle of 60 degree with the line of centers as shown in the diagram there. The coefficient of restitutions between the sphere is uh, 2 over 3. Uh, the first question we need to find out the angle through which the directions of motion of B is deflected by the collision. All right. Then secondly, we're going to find out the loss in total kinetic energy of the system as a result of this collision. Okay, uh, we're going to look at each one of these uh, shortly. All right, let's take a look at the part A here. All right, we are still looking at the same uh, oblique collision. We need to find out the angle through which the direction of motion of B is deflected by the collision itself. Okay, now uh, we have a two sphere here. The mass is m and 302 m. All right. Now, we, uh, as usual, we're going to apply conservation of momentum as usual. So we can start off with conservation of momentum. Now, by using conservation of momentum, uh, we have uh, now anyway this is an oblique collision so we might want to consider the directions where you want to apply the conservation momentum now uh, for this we're only going to concentrate on the horizontal direction uh, that is parallel to the line that passes through the center of your collision okay by taking this direction here we're going to consider its conservation momentum the total momentum before is m u and then the, oops, it's not MU only, sorry, my mistake here. MU, because the sphere of B is also moving uh, towards the directions of A, but uh, the directions of its velocity is different. Okay, now we know that there must be a negative because the direction is different. We are only considering the um, direction of the velocity, the direction of the momentum that is parallel to the line that passes through the center there. So therefore, here we have 3 over 2 m uh, u cos. Uh, we say that u cos 60 degree. Okay, because it's negative, it's moving in the opposite direction. Okay, that must be the same as. Um, now let's let's assume that. After the collision, after the collision, the A would move with a speed, uh, let's say V A, okay, V A, whereby uh, B, the sphere B, will move uh, with the speed of B B. We are considering in the x direction. This is the x direction. Okay, so therefore we will have M V A X plus 3 over 2 mvbx. All right, so I hope that is clear. And then we can simplify all this. All right, so if we want to simplify all this, we will have uh, this is a uh, half, of course. So you have a, a 3 quarter, and then that will give us a negative uh, 1 quarter there. And then uh, if we simplify this, we have bax uh, plus 3 over 2. B, B, X. This will give us um, this is three quarter. So therefore, we have one quarter there. So, so it's one quarter uh, U <clears throat> by removing the M in this case. By removing the M in this case, now uh, we have B A X plus three or two V B X is equal to quarter U here. All right. So I hope that is clear. If you want, you can uh, multiply by 4 for both sides. So we have this. 
uh, there will be a 6 u that will be our first equation there did I get it right yeah okay that's our first equation right okay now the second equation we have to make use of the um, restitution Newton uh, restitution's law here right we know that the coefficients of restitutions is 2 over 3 therefore by using Newton restitution's law uh, we can rewrite that as okay uh, that will be b p x minus b a x over u minus minus become positive because this one is moving in the opposite direction here uh, we are looking at u cosine 60 which is a half a u and then that will give us 2 over 3 okay. and then uh, by a bit of simplification here I will have 3BBX minus of 3BAX and then that must be the same as okay let me see here this is uh, 3 over 2 okay 3 over 2 uh, U will become 3U here I think that is correct let me see <coughs> 3 over this is 3 over 2 so it's three. So therefore, all these uh, u, uh, sorry, all, all these uh, factor can be cancelled off. We will have uh, something like this. Is equal to u. All right. So I hope that is uh, clear here. Okay. Just let me double check one more time in case I made mistake here. So we have three over. Two, so that is a three. Yep, that is correct. Right, okay, so that's the one that we have. In order to solve this uh, simultaneously, right now maybe I want to eliminate my um, b a x. So therefore, I'm going to multiply four both sides here yeah, to get my second equation. And then solving this, uh, I'm going to take one with two. So add them up, I will have ten v b x that must be the same as phi u therefore the direction uh, the velocity of bbx must be 0.5 u here okay or half a u all right so i hope that's clear and then from here i can figure out my vax okay of course i can figure out my vax but uh, vax is not our concern at this point so BAX is basically B, uh, BBX minus of uh, 3, uh, sorry, minus of U. So BBX is actually BBX minus of U, which is negative U over 2. Well, which means uh, the sphere A actually rebounds, rebounds with a magnitude of speed of U over 2. Okay, that's what we have. And then... Um, Lastly, don't forget, we also need to consider the um, the component of the velocity that is perpendicular to the line of action. Okay. Now, that component does not change. So, for B, particularly for sphere B alone, okay, now, that um, vertical, vertical, I would say, uh, B, yeah, sorry, let me rewrite that properly. The vertical component of the the vertical component of sphere B after the collision does not change. It will still be the same as uh, u sine uh, 60, which is going upward. Uh, now that will give us set 3 over 2u. And then uh, to show that on this diagram here, this is how it looked like at this point. Okay, so after the collision, uh, it will have uh, this component here. I think I I draw it somewhere here so that you can see that uh, more clearly. So after the collision, the the B is uh, will have a horizontal component which is B B X, and then you also have a uh, a vertical component which is given by this B 
B Y there. And then the direction of this sphere B will be moving this direction. And then this one will be the uh, the resultant uh, speed in this case. The angle mag will be somewhere here. Let's call this uh, the theta then. Okay. Right? So I'm going to pause here for a while. Uh, we are going to work out the direction. Okay. And anyway, we can work out the directions um, already. Okay. Just let me clean this up. I hope that this is clear at this point. I'm going to um, clean this up and then we're going to work out the direction shortly. All right. Welcome back. Uh, now we're going to proceed on from here. We have found out the final velocity of a sphere B after the collision, the horizontal component of sphere B after the collision, and then the vertical component of sphere B after the collision. So from here, we will be able to find out the direction of the motion of B uh, being deflected by finding out the angle theta. To find angle theta, we can actually take like uh, tangent so we can take tangent, which is the same as BBY divided by BBX. And then BBY is this, search 3 over 2, U over U over 2. And then from here, we found that uh, tangent theta is equal to search 3. And then with a little bit of help from technology, you found that theta is 60 degree. Therefore, we conclude that the angle uh, through which the direction of the motion of B is deflected with respect, uh, with respect to the line that passes through the center is given as 60 degree. All right. So I hope uh, that is clear at this point. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to the um, loss in total kinetic energy. All right. So that's the one that we're going to uh, work out. Okay. Now, before that, we are going to find out the um, the speed of B after collision, which is given by BB. So BB can be calculated based on this. U. And then uh, by simplifying, let me see what do we have here. Uh, this is 3, this is uh, 1 here, so 4, this is 4 out of 4, which is 1. So basically BB, the speed of B is actually U. The speed of B is actually a U here. Okay. Now, once we have found that out, we can find out the total kinetic energy before and total kinetic energy after that. Right. So we have uh, the change in kinetic energy. So I'm going to work out the change in kinetic energy first by taking the total kinetic energy after collision. Uh, now we will know that uh, A does, does rebound. Previously we have already found A does rebound with um, U over 2 also. Uh, it does rebound. Okay, so therefore, the total kinetic um, energy after is given by half m u over 2 square. That is the kinetic energy of sphere A plus the, the kinetic energy for sphere B, which is half 3 over 2 m u square also. Now this is the final kinetic energy, subtract off with the initial kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy is u square, and then plus half 3 over 2m, also u square. That is our initial kinetic energy. Alright, so from here we're going to uh, simplify this calculation here. Uh, we have uh, a quarter here, therefore we have 1 8 mu square, and then this one is 3 quarter. Alright, let me see what do we have here. We have um, uh, 3 2, so this one's supposed to be another 2 5, so 5 over 4. 
mu square and then there will be 6 7 so 7 over 8 mu square minus 5 over 4 mu square and then there will be um, let me see 2 10 negative 3 over 8 mu square therefore we conclude that the loss in kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 8 mu squared right so i hope that is clear uh, for this question we can move on to the next question shortly right question six a particle p or mass 2 kg moves along a horizontal straight line uh, the point o is a fixed point on this line at time t the velocity of p is v and the displacement of p uh, from o is x the force or magnitude this x on p in the directions of o p now when t is equal to 0 x is equal to 8 and then v is equal to negative 15 uh, these are all the initial condition we need to prove that the velocity uh, with respect to x is given as such and finally we need to conclude the expression for displacement um, in term of x all right so let's start by drawing the diagram out to see what we are looking at so first of all, we are looking at a uh, fixed point O here. Okay, so the particle initially when t is equal to zero, the particle is somewhere here, based on the uh, diagram here. So we have eight meter example. All right, and then uh, the object has a initial velocity of negative fifteen. So most probably it's going to move towards um, O in this case All right and then uh, with a certain velocity uh, given as v All right and then there's a force acting on p um, in the direction so the force that is actually acting on p is in this direction and then this is the, the only force that is acting on the object so therefore we can apply newton's second law which is m v d v d x uh, here i purposely use m v d v d x because i notice that i want to convert um, the velocity in term of x right? uh, the resultant force is given as such therefore we can uh, substitute all this information in we will have at x minus 1 to 8 x cubed and then uh, do a bit of simplification And as usual, we're going to integrate this. Right, so therefore we have v square, 2x square plus uh, 60, oops, it's not 64, divided by 2, so therefore 32x square plus a c. So once we substitute all this uh, information in, when x is equal to 8, v is equal to 15 here. We have 15, negative 15. Plus a c. All right. So from here, let me see what we have here. Um, let me try to use calculator on this just to save a bit of time here uh, let me see here this is 64 okay just let me try that one up so this is 225 over 2 uh, we have 64 uh, 64 2 so that is 128 and then this is 64 1 over 2 plus a C um, if I were to multiply 2 both sides, I will have 2, 2, 5. And then uh, 2, 5, 6 here, a 1 and a C. So therefore, the C is equal to <coughs> 2, 5, 7. So 5, 7 here, I will have negative, um, is it 5, 7? Let me see. 5, 7. 
So negative uh, 32. Okay, then I can conclude that my velocity function is this. Alright, and then I can uh, factorize as usual. I can take out all the uh, 2 and the x squared, so it becomes 4x squared. And then uh, this one will become x4 instead. And then, uh, then we have 32x squared plus, oops, it's not 32 anymore because I took out the uh, 2 already, so it should be 16 x square plus 16 here. <clears throat> so let me see whether I can get the answer here. Let me see here. Divide 16 here. Mm, 4, 4. Mm, there's something not right with my calculations. Hold on. Huh? 2, 2, 5 here. This is 64, 2, 1, 2, 8. 1, 2, 8, yes, correct. So if I multiply by 2, 2, 5, 6 here. Yeah, and then um, this is 32, 64. So 1 over 2. Yep, divide by 32. This is 1, 2, 8. Divide by 2, 64. <coughs> Did I copy it down wrongly? Hold on. This is 64. And then after that, um, from here, I need to divide by 2 again. Yep, uh, so far so good. Uh, oh yeah, I know what went wrong. Hold on, just let me clean this up. I just noticed my error there. When I multiply by 2, I forgot to multiply by 2 for this. And then therefore 2c is equal to negative 32, c is equal to negative 16, v squared over 2 is equal to 2x squared plus 32x squared minus 16. And then as usual, I can take out the 2 over here, become 4x squared. Um, that will be x4 minus... Mm. I take out a 2 also, so x squared here plus uh, 16. Then therefore, this can be factorized into x squared uh, minus uh, 4 <coughs> squared over x squared. And then if you simplify this, uh, we will get v equal to 2 x squared minus 4 over x. Of course, then again, there's a plus or minus that we need to uh, deal with, right? <clears throat> so from here, uh, uh, again, the uh, questions uh, come back to, let me rewrite this properly so that it looks uh, neat. In this case, I can conclude that the after you factorize this, the v is equal to 2x squared minus 4 over x here, uh, plus or minus. To conclude this, you have to check the initial condition. When t is equal to 0, when x is equal to 8, the velocity is supposed to be negative 15. So if you were to substitute 8 over here, uh, you may not be able to get a negative unless you choose the negative sign there. Therefore, uh, now because when x is equal to 8, v is equal to negative 15. Therefore, you conclude that v is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4 over x. There. All right. Now, that concludes our uh, first part. I'm going to pause here. We're going to move on to the second question shortly. All right. Once we have obtained the, um, the velocity function in terms of x, uh, we're going to... Um, obtain the expression for x in terms of x uh, using the relationship of a rate of change in displacement. Right. So we have here um, for b, the velocity is equal to negative 2 over x, x squared minus 4. Right. Now, of course, you can rewrite that as 
2x square minus 4 here negative over x and then now uh, we know that velocity is given as rate of change in displacement that is dx dt okay and then now uh, from here we just need to uh, group the light terms on one side uh, we will have um, in this case we have uh, let me see we can rearrange the dt on one side so I'll take for instance the negative 2 and then uh, the rest of the x term can be grouped together with the dx <coughs> right now from here onwards uh, the antiderivative for uh, 1 with respect to t would be very straightforward that will be 2t itself uh, the only thing that is challenging is the uh, rational functions for this right now we're going to use a partial fraction method on this case <clears throat> all right now i'm going to um, consider this working at the side here or we're going to consider the partial fraction for x x squared minus 4 as a over x minus 2 and b over x plus 2 <clears throat> Okay. Now by uh, substitution, we have x equal to negative 2, for instance. Uh, that will give us a negative 4b equal to negative 2. b will be equal to half. And then repeat the same process for x equal to 2. We will have 4a equal to 2. That will yield the same result as b. Uh, therefore, this can be written as... 1 over 2 x minus 2 plus 1 over 2 x plus 2 All right <clears throat> therefore we're going to integrate this partial fraction uh, from here we have half and the other half Okay, now from here the result will be half a ln x minus 2 plus a ln x plus 2. <coughs> now of course we can uh, apply the logarithmic uh, rules by combining both of these. Now don't forget the plus c also here. Now we will have, um, okay, now if I bring the 2 over this side, I'll have negative 4t instead. That were u ln x square minus 4 plus a c. Right. <clears throat> and then uh, from here, you can apply the initial condition to obtain the value for c. When t is equal to 0, the x is equal to 8. Right. Now, based on this, we have, um, we have 0 equal to ln. <coughs> So uh, there's a uh, ln 60 here. Therefore, the C would be negative ln 60. Right? <clears throat> so from here, we can finalize our expression as negative 4t minus a ln 60. Here. <clears throat> and then we can combine this as 60. And then finally, we can uh, rewrite this expression so that x will become uh, the main subject here. Right? So we can change it to uh, anti-log. Therefore, you will have, uh, in this case, let me write that straight away. <coughs> okay, there will be x squared minus 4 over 60 will be equal to the exponential 4t here. All right. Alright, now I'm going to pause here for a while. Uh, hopefully you can check um, if you are able to get this at this point. Hmm? And then uh, later on I'm going to finalize the expression for x in term of t. Alright, okay, now let me clear this up. We don't need this anymore.
So from here we have x squared minus 4 over 60 is equal to exponential negative 4t. And then by rearranging this, we have x squared equal to 4 plus 60 exponential negative 4t. Then x will be 4 plus 60 exponential 4t square root uh, square root of um, t here. Right? <coughs> now we make assumption that the x uh, should be positive. So therefore, we only take the uh, positive version of this uh, square root. And then there you have it. This is the expression for displacement. So we can conclude that the displacement function is given as x equal to 4 plus 60 exponential negative 4t square root here. Alright, now I think that is for any time that is greater than or equal to 0 here. Alright, so I hope that is um, clear to everyone. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. We're going to move on to the next question. All right, now let's take a look at uh, question 7, our last question in this paper here. All right, now one end of the light in inextensible string of length A is attached to a fixed point O. The other end of the string is attached to a particle P of mass M. Uh, you can uh, see the, um, the visual representation of the particle on the left hand side of the screen. Now the particle P is held vertically below the point O with the string topped and then projected horizontally with a certain uh, initial speed for instance. Okay, maybe I can label that as U here. When the string makes an angle 60 degree with the upward vertical, uh, this is what they mean by 60 degree with respect to the upward uh, vertical line, uh, P become detached from the string. In its uh, subsequent motion, P passes through the point A here, which is a distance uh, A vertically above O. So this is A vertically above O. All right, and then we also know that the length of the string is a also. So this length of the string is a. All right, the same go for this. All right, <clears throat> now the first uh, question here, the speed of p when it becomes detached from the string is v. Use the equation of the trajectory of projectile to find um, the speed of v when it starts to detach itself from the string in terms of um, the length a and gravitational acceleration g. Right. Now if you open up your MF19 data booklet, uh, you will see that there is uh, one equation called the equations of trajectory or projectile motion, which is given as y equal to x tangent theta minus of g x square over 2v square cosine square theta. All right. <clears throat> now, once you have obtained this equation, you need to know um, what are we looking at. Right? Now, first of all, the y itself. y basically represents the distance uh, from here. If you are referring to the projectile motion, the moment the particle detach itself, that will be somewhere here as well. Y. And then how far, how far uh, the, uh, the particle is when the vertical height is Y. That is referring to X over here. Okay. And then the, the angle theta, angle theta is the angle made by the velocity uh, with respect to the horizontal line here. So this is theta. <coughs> Right, so we basically got everything there. All we need to do is just um, substitute into every single variable that we need to replace that uh, with respect to the context of this uh, setting. Right now, first of all, um, by looking at this right angle triangle, uh, we, we can find out that the x, x, the horizontal displacement is given by a sine 60 which is the same as a sub 3 over 2. All right. 
and then uh, for y uh, for y itself is uh, you can see that for y is a a the entire length a subtract off with um, by using the right angle triangle again is a cos a cos 60 now we know that a cos 60 is actually a half therefore y is actually a half all right so now we have obtained the value for y we have successfully obtained the value for uh, horizontal displacement and then we know the angle theta here angle theta here is the same as 60 degree and then now all we need to do is just plug and play uh, hopefully it will play well in this case now we have a over 2 uh, the x is a set 3 over 2 uh, tangent 60 degree g x square so g x square so g x square that is a 4 sorry <coughs> g x square and then divided by 2 v square uh, cosine um, cosine theta so cosine square is 60 degree so this part here we have to uh, be very cautious as there are so many uh, cert involved right. now I can see that um, in this case most probably the A is uh, we can remove the A just let me check um, up to this point we have this is A square it's X square V square cosine square Mm -hmm. the x is a tangent all right just let me check for a while <coughs> mm. the funny thing is that we have a a square lying around which is not supposed to be there Nevertheless, uh, let's let's try out and see where it brings us up to this point. Okay, so from here we are going to change the tangent sixty into set three, and then that will give us uh, three over two a. Uh, subtract off with this. Um, uh, cos sixty is a half, so it's a quarter, and then you have a half. All right, so that is a three over two. Uh, three over two. A square G over V square <coughs> over V square here and then uh, right after that we have uh, 3 over 2 A square G over V square is equal to uh, A right after we simplify that and then uh, finally we have the V square is equal to 3G 3G A sorry 3G A Right, so it's just 3GA. I think after we simplify that, it's just 3GA. Uh, 3 over 2GA. And then from here, we found that the V, the velocity when it starts to detach itself, is given by 3GA over 2 uh, meter per second. All right. And then uh, that's how we get the uh, velocity or the speed v in term of a and g there right so i hope the first part is clear all right so i'm going to pause here we're going to move on to the last section shortly all right now let's take a look at the last section b we need to find in term of the mass m and gravitational acceleration the tension in the string immediately after p is initially projected horizontally that is uh, this section here um, OP. Right. Now just by looking at this uh, section here, by applying Newton's second law, um, we can conclude that the resultant force is equal to the centripetal force which is given as mu square over uh, the radius of the vertical circular motion. Uh, the only thing that uh, we don't have is the initial speed where it was uh, launched right? but we, we can make use of a V in this case uh, because we have found V in term of AG over 2 square root right? 
Now, how can we relate the V and the U here? Right? In order to do that, we just have to apply conservations or energy in this case. Right? But before that, I'm going to include the resultant force that is acting on the particle P um, at this point, which is given as the tension uh, subtract off with the weight will give us the resultant force A. And then um, there you have it. Uh, you can rearrange that as tension as mg plus ma multiplied by u squared. That's our first equation. Now next we're going to uh, use the conservation of energy to obtain a relationship between the initial speed and the final speed here. Right. Now we know that the total energy at this point must be the same as total energy at, at this point here. Let's call this uh, Q then. Yep. So we know that the total energy at point P is the same as total energy at point Q. Right. Now at point P, the only energy involved here is um, kinetic energy, which is half m u square. Uh, let's try to make this position here as our reference uh, where our gravitational potential energy is calculated from. Now therefore the GPE at this reference point is equal to zero. All right. <clears throat> so you only have uh, kinetic energy at this point and then when you reach to point Q it has both the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy, which is given as um, mg, and then the height here. Right. Now the height is given as, I'm going to write this one down here, uh, height is given as a plus this uh, small section here, small increment, which is given as a cosine 60. Uh, this part is a cosine 60, which is basically just uh, half of a. And then therefore, uh, the gravitational potential energy based on this altitude of um, 3 over 2a okay, will be given as 3 over 2a here. And then uh, from here onwards, we can um, find out the relationship between the speed and the, the final speed and its initial speed here. Okay, uh, let me see. In this case, we can make use of mu square. Uh, we can get rid of the half. That will be uh, mv square. Then our v is here, so we can rewrite that as a g over two plus three a g over two also with the m. Now both these are the same one. Therefore, we have here uh, 3mga. So the mu square is basically given by 3mga. We are going to substitute this relation here back into equation number one. Therefore, we can conclude that the tension is given by mg with 1 over a multiplied by 3mga. And then that will give us... Uh, let me see what do we have here. We have uh, 4 mg. Uh, therefore, the tension in the string immediately after P is launched um, horizontally should be 4 mg, which is 4 times the weight of the particle here. Right? So I hope that's clear. Um, okay, so for those who are taking this exam, uh, best of luck to you guys. Right? Okay.